uh, I had to uh, talk a few months because it was a tough ego thing to admit it and so on. But I one by one realized, uh, okay, he always accumulated a little bit. I come late a little bit. I argue with the manager. And I thought back of the matter D, of course. I was embarrassed before him, even though he wasn't there. <laughs> you, know? Hmm. He, you know, when you're 14, when you start with 14, somebody to, to, to nearly 18, you, it, it's so impactful. It's like a parent, nearly. I was embarrassed. I'm glad that he, he doesn't know what happened. And I started to analyze. But what was wrong, wrong. And I came to a realization there that was more why it also came from him. He, mind you, he always talked about excellence. That everything was, is, is, is this excellence? Well, no, it's not exactly. Well, they make it excellent. It, so it, it was put in you. And when I looked at this was not excellent, and what and I and I heard discussed that what is excellence as you what's excellent in a thing anything doesn't matter what it is here this thing or anything is if it if it works for what it has been created and he made it clear our excellence in human being is to do your function as well as you can to have your relationship as well as I can to be uh, uh, your your uh, your morals and your values as high as you can. And you also said once in a while, think about how you can improve. Think about yourself, how you can improve your work, your function. How can you improve your relationships? And I finally ended up to think about that, even though it was very well known to me because of it was beaten into me. And then I said, how, did I do excellence in my function? Uh, sometimes. Mm -hmm. They do excellence in my relationship. Sometimes I said, "Good mm -hmm. morning." I said, "So good morning, everybody. Nice to see you all." So and so on. So I broke it down, and once it came the realization, I said, "All right." Then I talked to my major D again, and I promised that it would never happen again. Mm -hmm. Again, he wasn't there. I know, and I wrote on my mirror where I shave, "Go to work for excellence," and sure enough, I, I, I just changed. I made it, made a sharp shame because look, everybody, in particular society today, we, we always blame people and so on. Uh, in society, I mean, it's unbelievable what we blame. And it's, I listen to this stuff and I want to cry for, for the people. He taught us, and, and that's, it, that's it, the, the greatest thing I knew from him. I had to write an, an essay for school at the time, hotel school, when I worked still there as a kid, I was 16. And about what we now think of our business, but I went back to work and I want to write about him. And I saw him approach a table of, of guests. Now mind you, we were always told we, we, we're the servants. I was basically in the air. And I could tell clearly that the guests were proud that he came to them. I've seen that before, but ne never recognized it. And that night I wrote about him DSA and an MDSA. I said, well, ladies and gentlemen, what what I what was clear there, and goodness, why don't we see that? I define myself, not other things. And I and, and that time in my little room in San Francisco, I realized I have forgotten that I define myself. I have just gone to work, not for excellence, not to define myself. And no matter what, we define ourselves, period. It's, it's, it's not the lie that it is the other group of people or whatever. It's a terribly sad lie because I followed that lie too, in, in, indirectly. You know, I, was, oh, I blame stupid management. Mm. <laughs> not myself. That's so silly. And so I, I learned that and I I changed.